Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Good Book Hunting. And this month, the fabulous month of February, we are going to do something a little bit different. Up till now, we've been using books that are adult books that are popular titles that you folks have been requesting. But at the end of January, the ALA, the American Library Association, otherwise known as our mothership, announced the Youth Media Awards. And these are the major children's book awards. You know, those fancy gold stickers that you see in a lot of our books. They don't announce all of them, but they announce some of the major ones. And we know that because these books have been announced as major award winners, that there's going to be some long lists on these titles. And we figured we'd do, you know, double duty, announce some of these awesome, awesome winners, and also help you find books for your kids and teens, and do something a little bit different. So this is a three for special, and we're really excited about it. So... My name is Gretchen. I am the Digital Services Librarian here, and if this is your first episode of Good Book Hunting, myself and my three colleagues each use a different resource to find read-alikes for the same title. We are going to start off with the book that won the Newbery this year. That would be uh, When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller, which has a gorgeous cover that you should be seeing after I edit this. Um, the description of this book is, would you make a deal with a magical tiger? This uplifting story brings Korean folklore to life as a girl goes on a quest to unlock the power of stories and save her grandmother. So it gives you some ideas. Think walk two moons or where the mountain meets the moon are the suggestions that it gives in the description. But um, mostly I just think that I want to read this book right now. So again, this is the winner of the Newbery this year, which is Best Books for Juvenile Fiction. And in this episode, I am going to stop talking. And Olivia is going to take us through how to use the catalog to find specifically children's titles, because it's a little bit different than when we go and we show you how to use it for adults, or it can be. So Olivia, go ahead and take it away. All right, so like Gretchen said, I'll be using the catalog. So let me share my screen. Okay, so you'll just go to cwmars.org and the main page will look like this. If you want, you can just get started by typing right in here, but I like to go to advanced search because this will let us search specifically for children's items. So I'm gonna type into the title box when you trap a tiger. And then um, ignoring all of these big boxes, we're gonna scroll down and choose search library. You can see right underneath all CW Mars libraries, there's a children's catalog option. You can also find Westfield Athenaeum on the list and right under Westfield Athenaeum catalog is Westfield children's catalog. So we're going to search by that. And when you trap a tiger shows up, it is the only result. And there are currently 18 holds with 63 copies and it looks like our copy is available. So we have a lot of different subjects here and all of them, not all of them, most of them include juvenile fiction after them. This is really helpful because it will only return results that are children's fiction. However, this fiction could still be, you know, picture books or an early reader and not necessarily a chapter book. Unfortunately, the catalog does not um, search that way. You can't um, filter that stuff out. Um, as for genre, they just give fiction, juvenile works, and fiction again, so it's not terribly helpful. So I think I'm going to go with um, a subject that includes juvenile fiction and something that's a little bit more detailed. Um, so I believe Gretchen said that there was an element of storytelling, so I'm going to go with storytelling juvenile fiction. And because before I had selected Westfield children's catalog, it's still only going to search for items that we have here at the Westfield Athenaeum in the children's library. 
So as you can see, we got lots of results, 24, um, three pages. I'd say that's pretty good. Um, it does include, you know, it will include electronic resources unless you check off exclude. And you can also limit to available. So let's limit to available and it'll refresh. And so there were uh, not that many that are not available. And we're searching all formats and you can see our first result was an audiobook. So let's just go with all books, regular print. And we'll try one more time and see what else we got. All right. If you are a children's library regular user, you might know what our call numbers mean. Um, you can see that this one says PB Mug and Thaler. So PB means picture book. So if you're looking for fiction, a chapter book, I would skip all these first one, two, three, four books. These are all picture books. And now we're getting to chapter books. So when you see our call number says J, and then the author's last name, um, that is a chapter book. So Starry River of the Sky, um, written by Grace Lynn, a very well-known um, Asian American author. Innkeepers, chore boy discovers that a visitor's story hold the key to returning the moon to the Starry River of the Sky. So again, another kind of adventure along with storytelling. Um, and a little bit of like a folk tale, maybe. Um, night books. Imprisoned by Nat Natacha, a witch in a New York apartment, Alex must tell her a scary story every night in order to stay alive. So something a little scary, which might not be something that happens in um, when you trap a tiger. And the rambling, again, Zen Shorts is a picture book. And then <laughs> When You Trap a Tiger came up, so that's always a good sign. Let's see if we can find one more fiction um, chapter book. And the 26 story treehouse and 39 story treehouse, which is a series. <clears throat> so hopefully those will um, Fill the gap for now while you're waiting for your copy to come in or you read it and you love it and you want something else like it. Hopefully there are some there now, but I'll pass it on to my colleagues to see what they found. I think that my favorite thing about that is I immediately went, oh, this is one time where like the publishing material and the search connected because it says that when you trap a tiger was like, where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lynn. And Olivia's first chapter book result was uh, Lynn's companion to Where the Mountain Meets the Moon, Starry Night. So it looks like that was a really good search for Olivia to do. And it, it really makes you feel like the results are related. Although we've talked before about how sometimes the marketing material on the book makes no sense. So. The rest of us also did our own searches using our own uh, places to look, and we're each also going to give you five recommendations from our searches. I used the CW Mars Overdrive catalog. This is different than the book catalog that Olivia just used. This is the one for the e-lending library, and it has pages specifically for children and teens as well as adults. Erica used Novelist, and this time around, Anne gets to use Google, which I used last month and had an adventure with. <laughs> so, uh, Anne, why don't you start us off? What was your adventure? Well, the adventure on Google, I actually typed in the title and the author and then read likes and it actually, the adventure was not as exciting yours, Gretchen. I think you took the circuitous route around uh, Google. I think adding read-alikes, which is the term we use for books that are similar to, um, at least in a Google search, got me at least to organizations that actually do give you some variation of read-alikes. Um, so the first thing that they tossed up was Goodreads, which we've reviewed in other, in other sections. Um, and we, Goodreads comes up with readers who liked this book also liked these books. So 
not exactly sort of direct um, connections. It came up with, you know, surprise Amazon, and Amazon will also give you some variation of the book that you're looking for. If you like this, you might also like this, but that's from a seller's point of view. Um, Penguin, as in the publisher, also gives, uh, similar to Goodreads, gives readers liked, readers who like this book also recommend these books. So I decided not to go for that. And I ended up going back to a source that we've used before, and I ended up going to Fantastic Fiction, which is a British-based um, company that um, provides information on authors and also provides information on books. So when you trap a tiger, um, but the books that they came up with and recommended, the first one was Bloom by Kenneth Opal. And Bloom is a lightning paced adventure that grabs hold of you and doesn't let go. This book is ridiculously fun and by fun, I mean terrifying. Not exactly sure how that relates. It's at least a YA author. That's gotta be a good thing, right guys? Hang on a sec. And the second book that they recommend is Thirteens by Kate Alice Marshall. And Thirteen is about a 13-year-old Eleanor has just moved to the quiet, prosperous Eden Elder when she awakes to discover an ancient grandfather clock that she's never seen before outside her new room. She's sure her eyes must be playing tricks on her, but then she spots a large bird staring at her as she boards the school bus. Sounds like a very sort of magical um, sort of adventure book. The third book that Fantastic Fiction recommends is Don't Turn Out the Lights. A uh, tribute to Alvin Schwartz's scary stories to tell in the dark, an anthology of short stories edited by Jonathan Mayberry. Um, it has a bunch of authors, short stories, flesh hungry ogres, brains full of spiders, haunted houses you can't escape, with a collection of 35 terrifying stories from the Horror Writers Association has it all, including ghastly illustrations from Iris Kopiet's that will absolutely chill readers to the bones. This didn't make any connections for me, but you know, I, you guys may have better insight than I do. So I'll, I'll let you guys answer to your thoughts about this recommendation. And the last book that Fantastic Fiction recommended was On the Dog by Andrew Loss. No, sorry, On the Dog, it's the Andrew Lost book one, and J.C. Greenberg is the author. In this book, when Andrew's latest invention, the atom sucker, goes haywire, Andrew and Judy are shrunk down to a microscopic level. Andrew and Judy find themselves lost on their neighbor's dog, where they encounter everything from colossal fleas to crab-like eyelash mites. Now they have to find their way back to the atom sucker and get unshrunk before it's too late. Again, I, I'm a bit of a, at a loss, uh, but this is what fantastic fiction gives us. So I will hand it back to you, Gretchen, and see if you can add some insight as to these recommendations. At least when a uh, scary story showed up in Olivia's results, I was like, oh, it's because he has to tell her a story. So, you know, we, Olivia had like storytelling that made sense. I, honey, I shrunk the kids on a dog makes no sense to me. <laughs> but at the same time, I just feel so happy with us doing children's books because these are all so silly um, and I love it. So speaking of things that absolutely do not relate, you might think that because the resources that Olivia and I used sound so similar and Olivia was able to get such good results that I too would come back with good results. I have not. So when it happens when you use the overdrive and you can use this as an app on your phone, I'm currently using the website um, so that later on I can share my screen with you. 
but you type in the title and at the bottom, it just says um, books similar that you might enjoy. And so I've just taken the top five. There is a list of about, um, I believe 10. I'm not gonna give you them all. And I guess I'm judging this based on whether or not where the mountain meets the moon shows up. It did not show up anywhere in this list. So I'm just like rude. Um, but the first one in the list, and, and again, there is no, these are in alphabetical order. I don't know how they decided to put them in order, but the first one is The Last Shot by John David Anderson. This is the beloved author of Miss Bixby's Last Day and Posted, who returns with a humorous and a heartwarming story of family, friendship, and miniature golf. So I guess the main character, um, signs up for mini golf tournaments to not be such a different, a, a disappointment to his parents and his family. He thinks that'll fix whatever's going on. So that's definitely one choice you can make. The second is Tornado Brain by Cat Patrick. In this heartfelt and powerfully affecting coming of age story, a neurodiverse seventh grader is determined to find her missing best friend before it's too late. So, this one is maybe not scary, but there's a little bit of a, also a suspense element to this one as well. The third is Black Brother, Black Brother by Jewel Parker Rhodes. Uh, from award-winning and best-selling author Jewel Parker Rhodes comes a powerful coming-of-age story about two brothers, one presents as white, the other as black and the complex ways in which they are forced to navigate the world, all while training for a fencing competition. I find it interesting that sports are coming up in all of these so far, even though I did not get that sense from the Tiger book, but there you go. It also comes up with Summer at Meadow Wood by Amy Rebecca Tan. From the author of A Kind of Paradise comes a beautiful and heartfelt middle grade novel for fans of All Standish and Sally J. Pla about a girl who finds comfort in the warm traditions and unexpected friendships of summer camp. And the title of this, I know you guys can't see this, but you'll be able to see it when I edit this. The cover of this is really pretty. It's very idyllic summer camp, wherever this girl is. It's very fancy. And the last one is The Dragon Warrior by Katie Zhao. A debut novel inspired by Chinese mythology, this middle grade fantasy follows an outcast as she embarks on a quest to save the world from demons. And out of all five of those, I actually feel like the last one is more related because it's fantasy, which you know when, when you trap a tiger is, and it's also inspired by Asian folklore and mythology. So I don't know how the last one is the most relevant, but there you go. There are other ones. I'm not going to read them, but I want to read all of these things. <laughs> all right. As usual, we save novelist for last um, unless she has to go first because novelist is usually where our dreams return to us and they give us a little bit more <laughs> related stuff. So Erica, take us home. All right. So um, over in novelist, um, the first read alike we got is The Land of Forgotten Girls by Erin Entrada Kelly. Um, and it looks like it's similar because they're using, uh, Asian American girls are using imagination and stories to cope with tough family situations. Uh, whereas in When You Trap a Tiger, it has to do with a sick grandmother. In uh, The Land of Forgotten Girls, it's uh, living with a heartless stepmother. Um, the next one is Inkling by Kenneth Oppel. Uh, and here people are learning to, or children are learning to cope with death using different methodologies. In Inkling, it's art, and in Tiger, it's storytelling. Uh, and it uh, looks like both of these books are going to appeal to readers who are looking for whimsical, moving stories about magic, family, and loss. Uh, the next one we have is Pashmina by Nidhi Shanani. And it's, a, it's actually a graphic novel, whereas Tiger is written in prose, but um, both of them feature young Asian American female protagonists learning about culture and family heritage in a magical realism setting. Next one we've got, we've got Hour of the Bees by Lindsay Eager. 
And this is, again, a kind of storytelling focused book. Uh, so both of these books are driven by the power of stories and they're both culturally diverse and character driven and ultimately uplifting books about self-discovery amidst the progressing illness of a loved one. So very similar themes there. And then the last one we got here is Louisiana's Way Home uh, and by Kate DiCamillo. And both of the books are lyrical. Um, both have the subjects of grandmother and granddaughter and grandmothers um, and have characters that are likable, well-developed and sympathetic. Uh, usually if you get far enough down on the list on novelists, it starts to just kind of tell you the different traits that they have in common, but it's oftentimes that's enough to kind of really uh, keep the similarities going between the two. So let's say this is all about grandmothers and granddaughters and character driven sort of things. So keeping right on theme. Well, what we hope when we do these is that we will find books on theme for you, <laughs> which is why we always like to save the catalog and novelist is why would they haven't changed because, you know, uh, they're useful rather than me and Anne, which is just like, we don't know why these are here. Um, as a personal push, I have to say that I do think Where Mountain Meets the Moon might be the place that you want to go next because Grace Lynn is a local author and she's amazing and I tell everyone to read those books or listen to that audiobook if I can. So shameless plug, they're amazing. Hopefully you have enjoyed this and if you catch this soon enough, it looks like our copy of When You Trap a Tiger is available. So go click on the uh, catalog and put a hold on it or request it through library to go or get your name on that list. Looks like the holds are already climbing. And let's celebrate this awesome, diverse, magically covered book and its wonderful Newberry win. So we'll be back to do some other awards. And in the meantime, just keep reading guys. That's the goal. <laughs> We'll see you next time. Bye.